Haas are going to be the new team on the grid next year. And while they're new to Formula One, they aren't new to motorsport. For the last 13 years, they've been racing and winning in NASCAR. And we've come to the season finale in Homestead to watch them in action. Gene is very successful here in NASCAR, isn't he? How do you think he's going to get on in Formula One? He'll do wonderful. Of course he will. I don't know. It's difficult to break in. And he's an American. and. It's all in Europe. This is really good food. You got to get some of it. Does he have a lot of respect here in NASCAR? Does everyone love Gene? Oh, absolutely. Gene's got a pretty good program. He's a smart fella, so I don't think he'd be making the move unless he thinks he can be successful. When did this Formula One dream first strike a chord with you? It was actually uh, after uh, the 2010 uh, year and we talked to Charlie Whitey, we talked to Bernie Ecclestone, talked to Jean Todd you know, from time to time. So they seem to encourage people to do things but at the same time they're a little bit cautious about well this is you know you really understand what you're doing and and to some degree I think they expect they expect you to fail uh, because so many teams have failed. We've spent you know well well over 15 years in NASCAR and uh, you know Formula One just seems like the uh, next conquest for us. Dean has accomplished everything he wanted to in the United States. He now wants to go more global. I know he's shipping machines around the globe, and Formula One and motorsports is a great platform to advertise your campaign. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a real good thing for Formula One. I think it's going to show uh, how someone can come in, team up with a world-class brand like Ferrari, and have some fun. Talk us through the technical partnership with Ferrari. Um, what is it? And why Ferrari? Well, we're getting the 2016 engine, and you know, keep in mind that we've been negotiating with Ferrari for years, probably a couple years in this contract. We're buying a lot of our parts from Ferrari. Now, we still have to build our own chassis. We have to build our own aero department. We have to do all of our own testing. We can't share any data. So there's really quite a bit that we're doing. We're just not, you know, we're not going to build our suspension, we're not going to build our uprights, we're not going to build you know, steering components and things like that. So I think what we're doing is really something that other teams really do at different levels. We're just taking it right up to, to, to the maximum. Did you talk to Mercedes about a partnership with them? Yeah, we talked to Nikki Lada. They made a proposal to us and it was a lot more expensive than Ferrari, so that was a negative for us. The other thing was is that Ferrari was willing to go beyond just supplying parts. They were also willing to uh, you know, help us, uh, you know, build our team. Gene has, has developed a championship NASCAR team, and he's going to use that experience on what he did to change this program in the NASCAR world to a championship program. He wants to start off with that knowledge in Formula One. Success is nothing new to Haas. He currently has four teams in NASCAR, and one of his drivers, Kevin Harvick, is favorite to take this year's title as the season reaches its climax. The final race of 2015, and three flag is in a technical tie-up with another team, such as the one with Ferrari, isn't a new concept for Haas. He has a similar alliance with Hendrick in NASCAR, and for two of the past four seasons, his teams have even beaten Hendrick in the championship. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, one and two. Are you trying to recreate that technical alliance with Hendrick in Formula One with Ferrari? You know, it seems like a natural thing to do. That's what we did before. Uh, you know, there's always this uh, question about racing. Are we racing or are we building things? 71 laps into this race. Look at the most laps led. It's Kevin Harvick. NASCAR, we wanted to go race, and we concentrate on racing, and the people that, you know, are really good at making the bits and pieces, you know, we buy from them, and Rick Hendrick was more than gracious to sell us all that, and that's worked out well for us. Kevin Harvick lost a spot or two spots on pit road. You know, they build a good product. We kind of alter them and do the things that we think are important to them um, and make them better. You know, that's kind of how that relationship works. They have definitely helped us grow a lot quicker than we would have if we were on our own. What made you go for Roman Grosjean and Esteban Gutierrez? You know, we had always said we wanted an experienced Formula One driver, and we wanted to have a driver that was on the 215 grid. So we just started talking to Roman. I, I looked on YouTube and watched some of his races. I, I kind of went through his statistics and looked at his history, and, uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a great driver. Grosjean's going to complete another move. This is a fabulous drive by the Frenchman. Gutierrez was a, a Ferrari reserve driver all along, and... Uh, they were sitting and saying, look, we have a driver here, he's very, very good, we want to put him in a Formula 1 car, would you consider that? And it's pretty hard to turn down anything that Ferrari says. Kevin Harvick has found some speed, he's only about two car lengths behind, right up to the 18th bumper here in the middle of 3 and 4. It's for the championship, 
Whichever one of the four finish in front of the others wins the title. Are you in Formula One to win the World Championship? Well, you know, we started in, in NASCAR way in the back, and, and uh, we did that for a lot of years. You got to pay your dues, I guess, and I think it's the same thing in Formula One. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, running one and two. You know the magic. You know, you have to have the right engine, you have to have the right chassis, you have to have the right driver, you have to have the right team. If you can put all those little pieces together, you can. I think you can compete for, for world championships. And you know, ultimately, that would be our goal. I'm not saying we can do that in one year or five years, or maybe it'll even take 10 years. It took, you know, almost that long in NASCARs. So. The gap getting bigger between the 18 and the four. Kyle Busch, the 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. I'm not sure why I pursue a lot of this stuff because it really does kind of grind on you. It's a different lifestyle than, you know, a lot of people can just sit home and, you know, go out with their friends and have nice dinners. And um, I, I sacrifice all that to go race cars. I don't know, crazy.